Christmas, everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a Grinch who is carving a roast beast. He has that nice, happy, end of Grinch movie look on his face, and he's got the big knife and the big fork, and he is just carving away. He's getting ready to take the gizzard. I hope you guys like this one as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. We are going to begin with an overlay of a really sparkly teal blue acrylic. This one's one of my favorite colors just because the glitter is so dense. I do want to mention that if you are working with a glitter acrylic where there is just so much glitter, you do need to use your acrylic a little bit wet because if it's too dry, it will turn crumbly. And that is the case with this one. So you have to use it a little bit, um, a little bit wetter than normal. And then we're going to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong, especially with a glitter acrylic of that nature. It has no strength. It's really a very weak product. It's just for the color just for the effect so that clear encapsulation is vital and then I'm going to file the nail into shape with my e-file going over all of the surfaces make sure it's nice and smooth now on a nail form backing you can start sculpting all of the various pieces that are needed for making this Grinch who is carving the roast beast I am going to begin with the platter the platter that he's holding we're not actually going to carve the Grinch's body and face we're just going to make like his arms his the fork and knife and the platter of food so this is actually a light blue acrylic and I'm going to just make the big platter going across it doesn't have to be perfect remember this is dr seuss things are a little topsy-turvy they aren't straight it's a little freeing because you can have fun with it so i've got the curved platter then i've got the two little feet of the bottom of the platter after i've got that done then you can actually make the beast that is being carved i'm going to take some brown acrylic and i'm going to gently press and curve it into the vague shape of what the beast looks like there are plenty of images on the internet but i actually find for this particular thing because you're looking at something that's 3d versus something that is flat and drawn in a very basic style to look at grinch ornaments that is a great way to find a good reference for what these items would look like in a 3d curved detailed format after I have my beast carved, I got some nice grill marks going across it. Then I'm going to grab some yellow and I'm going to carve a bunch of bananas. Bananas are actually present in both of the original movies, not the newest one um, with Benedict Cumberbatch, but the original two. Actually, I don't know about the new one. Anywho, because there are bananas on the platter of the roast beast and in the Jim Carrey um, 2000 Grinch, there is bananas on the sleigh as he and Cindy Lou who are plummeting back down the hill there's a huge bunch of bananas and I just think the banana presence is really funny because living on a snowflake where are you going to get bananas that's my question but I love that they're there that's like the perfect little Dr. Seuss this is not real life like I don't know I think it's funny so anyways we got all these bananas we're going to grab bananas for all around the bottom of the roast beast I've got a bunch of three in one spot and then two little bunches of two you don't have to fill in the entire border of the bottom of the roast beast but you do want to fill in a good portion of it after you have all of those bananas in place I would use nail glue and then some clear acrylic or just clear acrylic if that seems more your style however you want to just attach them down without adding a lot of bulk I'm going to grab some various colors of acrylic, greens, reds, purples, and I'm going to be adding other fruits that are around the roast beast. I've got just some green circles. You don't have to be detailed with this part. Just kind of take it a little freely, add some blobs of color down. The only thing that has a definite real shape is going to be the bananas besides just like a circle shape. So now I've got some red. If you don't want to sculpt all of these colors and have all of these different things with acrylic, the other thing you could do, which is really fun, is add some caviar beads. And if you have a variety of colors of caviar beads, that's actually a great way to do it because you can add in different shapes or different, it's a really small small things so you can add in some extra details that way now with silver acrylic I'm going to be sculpting my big fork and knife and I'm going to have first the knife that I'm sculpting every time I say big fork and knife I think of everybody loves Raymond if anybody else is like yeah that's the only thing I can think of too then apparently we watch the same reruns every night <laughs> but what we're gonna go through we've got the big knife now we're going to do the big fork as you're sculpting the fork if you want to separate the tines as I did you certainly can otherwise if that just seems like they'd be too delicate it's a little bit too much just painting the separation on them is also perfectly perfectly fine now back to the nail I'm going to be using green acrylic to be sculpting my Grinch face when you are sculpting the Grinch face if you do have a more intense color colored background like I do it's not something that's like a copper pink or a white your green may or may not cover you'll just have to know your acrylic and know if it's going to or not if your acrylic does cover like mine did 
you're good to go. If it doesn't, you may want to take and with white acrylic, sculpt a base of the Grinch in his neck and then sculpt the green on top of that so that the color shows up. Sometimes colors of acrylic over the top of other ones tend to look kind of patchy and bruised. So you don't want that to be the case. After you have his head and his neck, we're going to be sculpting on his body. As you can see, his body is a nice round oval shape, no shapes that are, you know, too crazy, nothing hard. I do want to mention that you want to leave enough of his neck, leave his neck kind of long because he does have a big white bib that is tied around his neck and you don't want to sculpt that on and end up losing the entire neck. So make sure that you do have his neck be a little long at this point. And then go over the hat, make sure the hat is nice and poofy. Same thing, you want the hat and the, the jacket to be opaque as well. So if your red isn't opaque enough, you could add a color behind that. Now with white acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting the bib that is going around his neck. If your red and white acrylic behave as mine do, which I would say is probably likely, then your red will probably bleed into the white acrylic regardless of how long you wait. And I just find that happens to me almost every time you see I have a big red stripe through my white acrylic. If that is the case, I just ignore it at this point. It was at one point I was like, oh no, I've got this red streak and now I'm just like, yeah, whatever, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And so if that does happen, don't worry about it. You can always correct it later with paint. It's one of those necessary evils of the Christmas season with red and white acrylic all the time. Add the little tiny tails that are tying his bib around his back. Make sure those beads are two very small beads so that they don't end up looking too big and too bulky. Add the rim around his hat on the top. Lay a bead of acrylic down when you're sculpting the little Grinchy hat. And then after you kind of stretch it around part way around the hat, then push in from both the Grinch face side and the hat side to create that bubbly, fluffy rim fur poofy look. Same thing for the tip of the hat. And now you can grab your beast and you can place it on the nail. Depending on how long your nail is, it may fit all the way on the nail or if it's like mine, it's going to be right at the very tip of the nail, kind of hanging off of it. You need to make sure that you leave enough room for his hands, his shoulders, and his elbows to kind of be placed up and over. So don't place the roast beast too high up on the Grinch's chest. I'm going to add some clear acrylic behind anything on the roast beast that seems like it is too delicate. I didn't reinforce anything as far as like the bananas go very much. I'm also going to take more clear acrylic and fill in behind the very tip of the nail where the roast beast is attached. Now going back to your nail form backing, you're going to need to carve the pieces of our Grinch that are missing. His arms, his hands, and yeah, that's it. His arms and his hands. So we're going to take and with green acrylic yet again, we're going to sculpt one hand, grab the big fork, place it on top of the hand as it is starting to cure, grab more green acrylic, fold the fingers over the handle of the big fork so that he is holding it. Then grab your red acrylic once again. As you can see, I do have my nail very close so that I can reference back and forth for sizing and shape. I am going to sculpt the Grinch's arm, the space of the arm that I need. It doesn't have to really attach down to the wrist of the green. You just want it to barely kiss it. That way when you add the white, same thing just like with the neck, when you add the white, it doesn't take over too much of his wrist. And then after you have the first one done, you got your first hand and arm and fork, then you're going to repeat the process on the other side for the knife. Pay very close attention to the shape of the Grinch's hands because they are not the same. It isn't symmetrical where you sculpt one and then you flip and mirror for the other side. They are being held differently. And if you are watching yourself with a fork and knife, you are going to hold them differently too. So it does make sense. So you're going to add the second hand over there with the fork or with the knife, I mean, holding just the very end of that knife. I'm going to add a little more definition to that raised pinky and then we have this arm as well so the one arm is just kind of straight out to the side closer and then the other arm is more of a bent shape with that knife now i would have to say i do not hold a fork and knife in quite this style even though i do hold them differently from one hand to the other it doesn't look quite like this um, and then we're going to increase that wrist a little bit and then after you have all of this done to this stage go ahead and add the white fur cuff on the end of the sleeves as you are adding those, it's the same thing. Expect your red to maybe bleed into the white and know you're going to fix all of it later anyways. I apologize. I missed recording gluing the arms in place. I do want to say, however, that as you're gluing them in place, you may need to trim your fork, your knife, your arms or something with a manicure scissor so that they fit. I did trim my fork, the tines, so that they were a nice little angle and fit nicely onto the beast. And then with more red acrylic, green acrylic, white acrylic everything you're going to go behind the arms especially the one that is holding the knife the hand and the arm with the knife and you're going to fill in so that it looks continuous and it looks a little bit more rounded these arms are upright they're more of a extreme 3d style they're more of a 360 whenever i do something like that 
or whenever you want to do something like that, you really need to make sure that you look at it from every single angle so that you know that it looks proper from whatever angle you might be looking at it. Cover a little bit more of the tines of the fork with some of the beast color so that it looks like it's stabbed into it. And then with acrylic paint, go through and add all of your details, all of your highlights, all of your color correction. The color correction is a big one. Anytime I do a red and white, obviously because of the whole, my white turns pink, but also because I don't think red acrylic is a bright enough red. It's not that really bright Christmas red, that true red. It's more of a, a burgundy. Even the bright colors of red that I have, I have like five different shades of red and they all end up looking darker than I want them to. So I like to add some red paint, some bright cherry red paint over the top of my red to really intensify and bring out that color. Added my white over the top of all of my white stuff and now I'm going to take black paint and I'm going to start adding my little Grinchy face. Start with a little oval for his nose right in the middle. Add little U-shaped eyes because he's in a happy little blissful moment. Some eyebrows, his smile, a little bit of a hairy texture outline going around all sorts of everything. Make sure that on this character you do have plenty of outlining. Like I said originally in the beginning of the video, this is the Grinch that is outlined. It's the style of character, which does make it harder to sculpt and create that sculpted 3D dimension, which is where the benefit of looking at an ornament comes in. And if you did not want to add in the outlines, I guess that would obviously be your choice. Obviously, you'd want to do the face, but the other ones, you know, if you wanted to make it look a little bit more um, in the style of the ornament without the outlines, you certainly could. However, I think it looks grinchier with the outlines. It looks, it just looks grinchier. So I like to add them. The other thing is, is pop art styling and bold outlines are very in style right now. So there's another reason. That's another like check in the checkbox, which I'm happy about because I love outlines. I'm a big fan of outlines. So I'm like, yay, outlines are back in. We're going to add details to our fork and knife, especially on the fork and knife because they are just that metallic silver. There seems to be, whenever something's metallic like that, the details kind of get lost in translation because there's so much heavy shine. So a few little black lines here and there to really bring out the the shape of the fork and knife is very beneficial. Add some extra grill marks on top of that roast beast, some lines on the bananas. Just keep going through, add whatever details you feel like you need or want to. Some little outlines around those other various fruits. You don't have to overdo it. They don't have to be complete outlines, but just a little bit here and there. I'm now going to apply some gel sealer over the background. You really get to see how shiny that glitter is once it's got the gel top coat on it. After that's done, cure, and then apply some matte top coat over the Grinchy, and that is it. If you were to add caviar beads, you would do it now at the end instead of sculpting some of that stuff in the beginning if that was the choice that you wanted to make. Otherwise, he's so cute. I hope you guys like this one as much as I do. If you love the Grinch stuff, I have plenty of videos I can share with you in the description box below, and I will see you all next time. Bye.